They, they literally talk to you and treat you like you're an animal. They have no respect for you. They feel like everybody that's in prison deserves to be in prison. These, this is the mentality. This is actually what they're taught mm -hmm. when they go to their their training camps and things like that. This is what they're taught. They're taught to, you know, if if somebody look at you wrong, pepper spray or anything, that and they have that right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be their word against ours mm -hmm. or mine. So to live in a like literally a ten by ten room. And your toilet is by your bed, and like, it's it's really uh, a a. It's, I can't even put into words yeah. what, that feeling, but it's just like the worstest, grossest, grimiest feeling that you could ever feel, and it's like you know, and like I said, I was fortunate enough to be able to get out. You have to remember, some people are never going to get away from that. Some people have to deal with that for the rest of their lives. Right. And it's and it's sad, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think no one deserves that at yeah. all. Yeah. The way things work inside prison and the way police treat people and like, with stop and frisk, like just humiliating people over and over again and exactly. making people feel like they have no right to not be touched. Like, exactly. that whole level of it, I think, like when I hear your story, I hear that at least one thing that sounds to me like made you be able to survive this ridiculous, you know, horrible set of experiences is that you felt connected to people mm -hmm. and had support and love. Mm -hmm. And part of what the prison does is it tries to take people exactly. away from us. Right. We can't even sometimes find people in the system. Exactly. And so I think like one of the things that we've been involved in, people are doing all over, is like prison letter writing projects and like mm -hmm. all this work to try to build across those walls because I think it's also a survival issue. Exactly. The mental trauma of feeling alone versus feeling like even though this is horrible, I have a support system. Exactly. You know, to me that seems like that breaking that isolation seems like a big part of our movement's work. Exactly. I mean I I've, I've I've noticed the the difference in behaviors from inmates when they've, you know, had time to spend with their families and when they haven't it's like you can there's a big difference in mm -hmm. you know the way that they act the way that they talk the way that you know they move and live day to day so it's, it, it, it does make a big difference about you know how the system tries to to take and break us apart and like you know even when you know my friends and family would come visit me in the prison you know it was a five second hug and like mm -hmm. you know you have to literally sit across from each other you can't touch mm -hmm. you know don't do this and like to now be able to lay on somebody's head if I wanted to mm -hmm. it's just you know a good feeling because you know it really those type of communications and interactions with other people kind of make you a person you know what I'm saying like it kind of makes you whole in a way and when you're alone it kind of like takes a part of you each day because it's like you you don't you're disconnected you're disconnected from your family your friends you're disconnected from the world so it's kind of like you know you want to try and keep your sanity as much as possible but you it, you slowly feel it draining out of you the police are inherently violent. So whether it's them stopping you exactly. before um, you know you are attacked, or whether it's the violence of not doing anything while you're being attacked, exactly. you know, or whether it's the violence of you know in New York City all the time, um, particularly trans women of color are stopped by the police. Folks are having at the police, the NYPD feel very comfortable doing uh, strip searches uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of the street. People are um, condoms are used as evidence. You know, it's like the right. ways that our communities are policed. Um, and targeted by the police uh, as like a real source of violence for us, you know? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, to me, I take um, comfort in is that we're building this movement, exactly. right? To, to have um, those forms of violence stop. An abolitionist movement is dismantling the police, but mm -hmm. we're also um, finding ways to to create accountability and safety for ourselves mm -hmm. that doesn't rely on them, you know? And I think that's... When I hear about stories about people who have passed because of police violence or violence in the community, um, when I hear about Islan's story, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I, I think uh, I turn to, you know, mm -hmm. like um, that, that it's, it's under-resourced and often not recognized, but mm -hmm. we are in the middle of, um, of a huge moment for, exactly. for, um, for our community. And, exactly. You know. There's definitely a movement.